okay to be different. It was okay, and I was gonna survive it. Didn't love myself still, but I realized I wanted to fight more than anything to be, I did not want to be normal, what people consider normal. For Halloween, because I was such a punk rock chick, for Halloween, I remember coming to school dressed as like a preppy girl, like with an IZOD shirt on, and people were like, oh my God, it's so funny. I'm like, I know I'm funny. My last, my, my last school disco, well, school disco, listen to me. Uh, I was, must have been about- Like a school dance? Like a school dance, yeah, yeah. we call it, but do you know I was called a disco or a dance? Yeah. 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 It was a school disco. I thought, right, I'm going out with a bang, because I didn't go on to sixth form, which was like 17 to 18. So I dressed up as Britney Spears. It was just after she did her comeback on the VMAs, doing Gimme More. Oh, so I it was we this, don't want to talk this about awful that. wig. I was four, I, no, how old was I? 15, 16. I got the DJ to uh, uh, introduce Britney Spears, and I came on and did a full. In front of your whole school. In front of my whole school. That's ballsy. As Britney Spears. There's That's a video amazing. on YouTube, I will show you it. If you will die. That's it's all, it's this Smithy's wig that I cut into a barb. It's horrendous. <laughs> Absolutely horrendous. But no, when I was like 14 when I thought, right, I'm not being the, this normal kid. I am. I'm being a man in a dress and I'm gonna make something of it. So when you do get these people messaging you on Facebook and stuff, take the time and go, I'm a freak too. Yeah. I've got shoes yeah. this big on, wigs, eyelashes, and I yeah. can leave the house. So everything's gonna be fine. It's honestly. super important that that message get out there. That's why I wrote it, because I don't want anybody to think that they're alone in this journey. Nobody's alone, even though I, you know, I go to shelters and I see these kids that are thrown out of the house, the minute they come out to their family, they're thrown out. The minute they're thrown out, they start tricking because they think there's nothing else that they could do except sell their body. And it's, it's a crisis. I mean, it's really, really bad, especially for LGBT youth. And it's a problem that we have to find a way to remedy. And if it's talking to them and letting them know their worth more, whatever, wherever we have, whatever we have to do and wherever we have to do it, we need to do it as a community, you know? So it's tough and I wanted them to know that it is okay and that you are loved. You may not feel it, but you are. You know, I try to send it out to the universe all the time. And it's, you know, sometimes it can't go transcontinentally, but I'm trying, you know, and it, it's hard. It breaks my heart that any of these children, anybody out there thinks that they're not loved. Yeah, I love the message that you give this to parents and towards the end of the book, you know, to just please, above anything, just love your kids. No it's all they want. They don't want necessarily the parent of a gay kid or a trans kid doesn't have to approve of what they're doing. That's okay, my mother didn't approve of me shaving my head. I just came out of the back and went, hey, one more. She was like, what the fuck? You know, it was that moment of I had to do it and a kid who's born in a wrong body is, is not that they want to do it, they have to do it. A gay child isn't choosing to be gay. They're not choosing to walk down a path that's more difficult in life. They're a gay child is a gay child, it's who they are. So what they need from the parent is not for the parent to go, oh, that's what I would do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I tried for that boy, damn it. <laughs> Didn't get it. Um, but it's, it's more of, all right, I'm gonna get through this because it's, I'm not used to this, and I, you know, it's not what I would choose for you, but I love you no matter. So for me, when I go to the shows and we do our tours and I see a parent with their gay or trans child, it's the most beautiful thing in the world to see that love and support. It's amazing, and it's all that child needs. We just did a show in Manchester, and it was at 14s and over. So seeing the, the parents coming was just like amazing. Thank you so much. And sometimes you'll see a dad, and every once in a while, I thought so it was a bit different. The but but like, it's a bit, when I see the dad, it's like I fawn all over him because it's amazing, yeah. really beautiful, and it's just we need more of it. So more and more as the show gets more mainstream, moms are coming out to events and stuff, and it's like I love you, I love you for loving your gay child, you know. They need to be praised for it. Amazing. Thank you. Um, thanks for coming. Hi, Vivian. Hi. Um, and my question is, um, there's kind of two parts. What is what are your favorite British reality shows? Yeah. And if you had your own reality show all about you. Would it be like contrived, kind of like John Rivers' reality show was, with, or would it have a message? It's nothing contrived about John Rivers, darling. <laughs> um, my favorite British reality shows. Well, I found a new one last night. Finding the p next greatest oh. Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Potter or pothead? Potter. 
They were like, it's time for you they to leave the connery. They like making dishes and stuff. <laughs> Buzzes. It was obscene. <laughs> and not only in the UK. <laughs> yeah, I love Great British Bake Off though, I love it. Um, Celebrity Big Brother's always been my favorite. Jungle starts tonight, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, that's a shit lineup though. <laughs> yeah, no, some of them are good. Some of them are good. Um, uh, you know, you give me a reality show and I could watch it. One thing I do hate though is sitting up in my hotel room or I stay with my friend in Hampstead is turning on the telly and seeing American shows. It's like, stop! You, Yorkshire vet. I love it. I was crying when the lady had to get rid of her. And then she went to auction and she's like, let me do it. I'm obsessed with Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away. Have you seen it? Does no. anyone love that show? Yeah. Nine, 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 nine. Oh, did you see it in Blackpool? No, no. With Hysterical. Hyster but Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away is about the bailiffs coming to get the, the money from people, even if they haven't paid their rent or something. It's hysterical. Oh my God, I love that. Oh, because all the, the, usually those, uh, the houses end up being brothels and everything. It's really, really What's good. the one, and I watch it all the time, with the doctor and they zoom in and it's, tell me what's wrong with me. Embarrassing body. That one. Okay, let's How talk for a minute. Dr. Christian? How, with his pink shirt, listen. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get RuPaul's Drag Race UK on television yet. We can shove a camera in somebody's anal fissure. <laughs> Tell you what it is. Dr. Christian doesn't need to tell you. Uh, it, it blows my mind. So if I had my own show, it would have to have a message because that's who I am. Would it be almost all reality shows are altered because you just can't we're not you're not watching. That's what I love about Celebrity Big Brother when it started was having the 24 hour feed. If you saw 24 hours of what I did, I would have won 100 <laughs> percent You didn't show anything that I when I stood up to Katie Hopkins, they showed none of it. They didn't show any of me trying to, I don't think, trying to mediate or talk to Perez and talk him off the ledge. Like, you didn't see any of it, so. Because he was too busy having sex with the garden. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> poor little girls. I was just trying to keep them on the floor. Cammy and uh, the other one, Chloe, because they were like, oh. I was like, calm down, calm down. <laughs> you know, have those moments. So uh, for me, it, I would hope it would have a message and people can kind of see who I am, really. I mean, it's my dream to have a talk show here in this country there's no American broads on, on telly, especially like things, yeah. I'm gonna try to make that happen, yeah. Thank you.